Did you know that the official doctrine of Jehovah's Witnesses is that without the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there is no life, there is no salvation, there is no justification without those three divine entities. Were you aware of that? Think about that. The official position of Jehovah's Witnesses is that without the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you have no life. You are lost. You have no justification, no sanctification, no redemption, and no salvation, and no eternal life. That's just a fact. They believe the Father is greater than the Son, but that the Father and the Son are both needed for everlasting life. John 17, 3. This means everlasting life, that they know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. See, simply believe, what oh, it sounds like Orthodox, it's Trinitarian, wow, they believe it all. You know, that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were involved in creation, sanctification, redemption, salvation, justification. No one who takes the Bible seriously would honestly deny that fact. The point, though, is that the supremacy of the Father, even over his Son, is still upheld and secured in the Bible. You can't really analyze it, check it, and honestly accept it. See, Athanasians and Trinitarians think that Jesus was just kidding when he said, my Father is greater than I. And also, when Jesus said, I and my Father are one, they believe that the word one is the same word as equal. Jesus never said, I and my Father are equal, but they hallucinate and think the word one is the same or means equal. And if it does mean that in John 10, then that introduces a whole bunch of problems about the scriptures because later on in the same Gospel of John, Jesus said, you know, about the same, using the same word about the, the apostles and the disciples, that they may be one just as we are one, they and us. Um, uh, we, you know, it's a unity together, one with God, one with Christ. Does that mean the apostles are going to become members of the Trinity? Does that mean that the apostles are equal with God in Christ then, if that's the case? If you're going to be consistent with, with, with which Trinitarians and Athanasians never are, you know, Paul said that the Christians will be one, the same Greek word, you know, one with God. So how would that work? Unless you're going to become an Armstrongite, and believe that uh, the Christians will become part of the God family, which is what he taught. He believed that the Father and the Logos were both co-eternal, co-equal, but originally that was the God family, but it, it, that expands eventually. And he has gone, you know, they've gone by scriptures just like in John 17, it says that they may be one. So, well, if I and my Father are one means I and my Father are equal, and I and my Father are consubstantial, you know, one in substance, one in power and all that, if, one, if it means that they're one God, you know, actual God, then the apostles have to be part of that one God too because Jesus said, that they said, just as we are one, that they may be one in us and all that, right? Well, Armstrong went by that and he also went by, oh, the heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Well, if Christ is the almighty God, the same way the Father is, and part of the Godhead or God family or whatever. Well, if the apostles, if the, you know, if the disciples are joint heirs, you know, the anointed Christians are joint heirs, then corresponding with John 17, you know, that they may be one or all, this is what Armstrong taught, that if Christians would, become, would basically become God too when they get to heaven and stuff like that. Part of the God family. See, uh, I mean, that was a heresy. That's nonsense, but at least Armstrong was consistent in the point, whereas, you know, Trinitarian Christian in the middle, the Baptists, the Presbyterians, etc., they're not consistent, because if they, or, you know, then again, there's some variations, but, you know, Dr. Maury, he's not consistent, because if John 10 means co-equality, co-eternity, all that stuff, and uh, co-essentiality, -essential, uh, consubstantiality, all that one God, and if that's what Jesus meant by saying, I and the Father are one, then to be consistent, Maury would have to say that the apostles become one with God as far as uh, eternity and uh, co-equality, too. Because he said, just as we are one. But of course, typical Athanasian, drone-tard loser that Robert Maury is, 
just as the arch heretic Athanasius himself was, they are not consistent or logical with that. John 10 does not prove that Jesus is Almighty God in the same exact sense that the Father is, or is literally Almighty God within himself, but only that he has the saving power assigned by the Father. He's one with the Father in shepherding work, and at most that Jesus is God over the circumstances, just like Moses was, Exodus 7.1. because of reflecting, in fact, being a perfect reflection of the Father's power, even greater than Moses. But Jehovah called Moses Elohim, that you will be Elohim, a God to the people, not like God, not as God, as some translations uh, you know, weaken it, the word for like or as is not there in the original Hebrew in Exodus 7. 1. But simply, I have made you God. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. I and my Father are one, in that context, is one in the unity of shepherding work. That was the context. I take care of the sheep, my Father takes care of the sheep. I and my Father are one. 